Hey everyone, welcome to the Cybercrime YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss a topic that's commonly searched for on YouTube and a, a topic I get asked questions about on a regular basis, and that's cybersecurity for beginners. It's a common question to ask, where do you start when you want to get into cybersecurity? And it's a challenging question because there's certainly plenty of places to start. And with the field being so wide and deep, there's a lot to learn. And certainly, by no means am I saying this is the only place to start, but I think it's a, a great place to start. And one concept to start with is called the CIA triad. CIA stands for Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability. I first learned of this concept when I was studying for the CISSP back in 2007. And I do think this is a great foundational concept. Further, I think uh, one thing that helps me to learn, at least, is to consider scenarios where a given theory or concept applies. I know back in my uh, undergrad computer science days, I definitely struggled early on being completely green and new to programming, but struggling with some ideas like data structures or uh, algorithms. But it certainly would help me whenever I would hear an, an example. So I'm going to provide a couple of scenarios to demonstrate where the CIA triad is present and then I'll ask you to uh, go forward and consider where in your life confidentiality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are present. Also, those three words are a lot to say, so I'll probably get tongue-tied a few times here. <laughs> so my background, I'm currently the Chief Information Security Officer at a well-known university in the United States. I hold a BS in Computer Science, an MBA, and I'm also an active holder of the CISSP since 2007. I hold the GIAC, GCED, certification and also the GIAC GSEC certifications. So as I mentioned, the CIA acronym stands for Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability. This triad is often represented as a triangle with the idea that all three of these depend on one another for strong security. In any given scenario, CIA should be present, but maybe if there's poor security in place, maybe only two will be present, maybe only one, and maybe None of these will be enforced, but anyway, in any sense, I want to give you an idea of how they can be present. So first, let's define these terms. The National Institute of Standards and Technology defines confidentiality as preserving authorized restrictions on information access and disclosure, including means for protecting personal privacy and proprietary information. Integrity is defined by NIST as guarding against improper information modification or destruction and includes ensuring information on repudiation and authenticity. And focus here on the word modification. I would, I would say make that your focus, and that helps me to better define integrity, better understand it. Availability is defined by NIST as ensuring timely and reliable access to and use of information. So the scenario I want you to consider is online banking, something that you and I do on a frequent basis, whether via a web browser, via an app on your phone, but the scenario generally goes like this. You establish an HTTPS connection, then you authenticate with the username and password, and most legitimate banks now will ask you to authenticate with a second factor via multi-factor authentication. And then finally, once this is done, you'll establish an encrypted session. So the question is, where is CIA present here? So where is confidentiality present? The bank and you want to have confidentiality here because you're exchanging private data about yourself that you wouldn't want to reveal to the world, most likely. So this is established by trading your username and password to authenticate you, to authenticate your identity. Further, you confirm your identity by using MFA. And then the next step, an HTTPS session is established that encrypts the transaction, that encrypts the session. And what this does partly is to prevent eavesdropping. So confidentiality is ensured by preventing an attacker from sitting in between you and the bank and sniffing packets, sniffing traffic, and seeing what transactions occurring. And it prevents the attacker from saying, okay, uh, John Smith has X amount of money in their account. And this, what effectively this does, it makes sure that only you and the bank are aware of the transaction, i.e. ensuring confidentiality. Where is integrity present? So one great thing about X509 certificates or HTTPS certificates is that they help prevent the modification of data in transit. What this does, as uh, I mentioned previously, it prevents an attacker from sitting in between you and the bank's server. And this prevents what's called man-in-the-middle attacks. In a man-in-the-middle attack, an attacker could theoretically sit between you 
and your destination and modified data in, in transit. And so an example of this attack could be if a man in the middle attack were successfully executed in your bank transaction, the attacker could say, transfer this $100 not to John Smith's account, but to the attacker's account. They can modify the transaction by modifying the account, the destination account number. So where is availability ensured? This is one of those concepts that it, it certainly seems a bit obvious, but um, it's certainly very important. And it's, <laughs> it really isn't, it doesn't become so important until availability is hindered. So availability here is ensured by making sure that HTTPS URL or the app you're using is up and functional. Now, why is this a matter of security? How does this affect security? Why is security involved? Well, security becomes involved because if you think about an attacker conducting a denial of service or distributed denial of service attack against the bank, that certainly would affect availability. That would affect the bank's ability to generate revenue. That would make your day worse because you couldn't get your transaction conducted. So another scenario I want to present is that of a Windows file transfer. Consider the hypothetical scenario that you're logged into a network that you're logged in with Active Directory domain credentials, and then you copy a file to a network file share. How are the concepts of confidentiality, integrity, and availability present here? So confidentiality is an interesting one in this case. Many organizations don't encrypt connections between clients and servers, but some do. They may use something like IPsec to establish an encrypted connection. That would surely ensure confidentiality as only you on the client system and the server would have access to this unencrypted data. Another way to enforce confidentiality would be to actually encrypt the data at the endpoint, i.e. on the server. So the data would only be unencrypted when it gets to your client or could be unencrypted on the server but it wouldn't, be it wouldn't be unencrypted in transit. There are other methods for enforcing confidentiality too. So ensuring strong authentication, in effect making sure that only the given user or given systems that should be able to see this data are able to see it. Network segmentation can certainly help ensure confidentiality by only allowing systems and users onto a given segment that, uh, that are authorized to get there. And another example would be access control lists on file shares. So a given Windows file share could be permission such that only given users, including, let's say, John Smith, are allowed. The ACL is checked upon access requests and John Smith's allowed. By no means are these the only methods for enforcing confidentiality, but in a Windows file transfer situation, these are certainly some of the methods that can be used. How is integrity enforced in a Windows file transfer? So one great thing about the server message block protocol is that signing, SMB signing, is uh, a feature that can be enabled. What SMB signing does is it makes sure that data transferred is not modified or tampered with. So again, it helps prevent the man-in-the-middle attack. And a couple of points are important here. By no means on all Windows or Active Directory networks is SMB signing enabled. It's important to double check on your client endpoint. It's important to double check in Active Directory group policy that SMB signing is enabled. Also, make sure that you're using the most recent version of SMB, which I believe is SMB v3. Just a, you know, a, a tidbit of information, SMB v1 should by all means be disabled. Uh, it was certainly leveraged by the WannaCry malware and is known to be uh, extremely vulnerable to attack. So make sure you're using SMB v3. And where is availability present in the Windows file share transaction scenario? So again, this becomes a bit, seems a bit obvious, but whenever you're transferring that file to the share, to the server, or copying it from the server to your client, it's important that that server is available. And as you can imagine, if a given server goes down in production hours, that could certainly affect a, a business and their productivity. As a result, many businesses, organizations have server monitoring systems that alert whenever a given server goes offline. When that email alert sent to their admins, they go and say, hey, what's going on here? And they go and check the system out. Further, it's important that data backups are present in case a server crashes or in case a server is infected with malware and becomes uh, 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 unavailable. So the data backups can be used in case a server crashes to uh, start from the ground up to start from scratch, or let's say a ransomware infection occurs, the data backups again can help restore that data. 
And certainly the, the data backups can certainly save businesses as you could do, certainly do some Googling right now and see that ransomware has very much shut down some businesses and um, closed them, unfortunately. So the data backups are very important for availability purposes. So given these two scenarios, I think this gives you something to stew on to consider the, the topics of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. I think something important to do is to consider where CIA are present in the daily scenarios in your life. I've listed a few situations here, but um, there are you know, many, many situations to consider. You know, Something as simple as buying something via an Amazon app, buying something via the iTunes store, or making a monthly Roth IRA contribution, certainly uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are present there and need to be. But uh, consider those scenarios, consider other ones in your life. If you have questions, feel free to submit them in the comments. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.